Hello and welcome to Hoop Seven's Basketball Hustle and it's amazing, Damo. We've got a full round of <laughs> NBL action to look back on and first time for a long time. After five games in the previous three weeks, we've had six games over the last week. Mm. So plenty to get our teeth stuck into. Plenty of highlights. Matthew Delavidova is clearly the shining light for oh, us to talk about brilliant. this week. The Sydney Kings on the other end of the spectrum probably for us to get our, our teeth stuck into as well. We'll hear from Alex Loudon. Really looking forward to that. I'm Chris Pike. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Hoop7 for making it possible. But the six-time Defensive Player of the Year, the six-time NBL champion, the has-been, Damien Martin. How are you holding up in the Perth heat? It's killing me, to be honest. Uh, I've, I've spent more time indoors in aircon than I think in the last few years combined. Another heat wave coming through Perth, so a few more 40-degree days. Mm. And, but to rub it in, or I don't know, I'm a sucker for gluten for pain. <laughs> I'm going down to camp over the Australia day long, a uh, few days off, yeah. and no aircon in a tent, oh, so it's going oh. to be interesting. So wow. maybe by the time we uh, we chat in, in a fortnight's time, I will have regretted that decision. But I've oh. just locked in a camping trip down south with my family, my brother-in-law's family. It's going to be good fun, but hot days. Wow, Damo, we might not ever get you back. This this might be our last episode. <laughs> this could be it. Heat stroke could get me, but no, I'm loving it. So much basketball played, and now I look. You know, to what's coming up in the next seven to ten days, we're finally there. Almost basketball every night. Yeah, it absolutely. was inevitable with the amount of games that have been cancelled. And similar to last year when they had that hub situation in Melbourne, it might not be easy for the players. I understand and respect that. They're away from their family a long time. But as a basketball lover, mm-hmm. I just look forward to knocking off work, <laughs> getting home or putting it on in the background in the office. Yep, absolutely. So plenty to talk about. First thing I want to talk about is... The break that teams have had now for COVID, every mm. team has had some sort of a break. Mm-hmm. We've seen the 36 is probably the longest break. They came out of a 31-day break and they had a had a win first up out of that over the Perth Wildcats at home. But everyone's had sort of at least somewhere between a 15 and 25-day break. And we've seen teams really struggle coming out of it. We saw the Brisbane Bullets when we spoke last week, their first game back against the Breakers, they really struggled. Mm-hmm. But then their second game back, they looked good. And the South East Melbourne Phoenix playing their first game, I think it was for them in 28 days, they looked looked horrible. I think we saw the Wildcats really struggle in their first game back last night, even though Adelaide was in the in the same boat. Can you imagine how tough it would be coming out of not only a four-week break, but having virtually no time on the court, virtually being in isolation that whole time, come out, play a game of basketball against a team who does have their legs back under them? Yeah, well, I heard Scott Morris and the Wildcats coach, they had two full training sessions mm. and they was, you know, obviously locked up for quite some time, out for two training sessions, you're on the court. And then Adelaide, even though they had 31 days between games, they only had five full training sessions. It's just, it it is player by player. Mm. You know, I spoke to Jesse Wagstaff, Jesse Wagstaff, he was asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. Yet other players had the cough, had the fevers, had the sweats, you know, were fatigued significantly. So player by player, you don't know how they're going to respond to COVID. And so when you get back on court after being ill for seven or 10 days, it is tough to get back to, you know, cardio yeah. more than anything yeah. so don't worry about the skill set just getting your lungs underneath you and, and your legs feeling good again so Adelaide were brilliant there's no taking that they wanted the ball more their defense was fantastic their team def- defense I thought was brilliant whether it was Mitch McCarron leaving the right person at the right mm-hmm. time to go and double whether it was Daniel Johnson went and doubled a few mm-hmm. times Vic Law in the post they were fantastic at the defensive end that led to run outs easy points at the offensive end and and that's a similar game plan to what the Wildcats love mm-hmm. is getting easy baskets off the back of good team defense Sure. Um, but Adelaide were fantastic, take nothing away from them. And Perth got back in the game, mm. you know, seemed to have started playing some good basketball in, you know, in the last 20 minutes, but yep. unfortunately it was too little, too late. But just good to see two teams who have had an extended <laughs> break back yeah. out on the court. Absolutely, and making up a 28-point deficit is always tough, so that mm. took a lot of energy just to get back into the game. Um, earlier in the weekend, Melbourne United signed... Matthew Delavidova, expecting him to bring a lot this season. They expect him to be a great defender, a great playmaker, uh, you know, to bring that hustle, to bring that leadership. I don't know if they expected him to shoot like he did <laughs> in that game on Sunday against the Illawarra Hawks. He he had made three of 18 from three-point land coming into that game. Mm-hmm. He hit his first five, five, seven of his first eight. He's ended up with 33 points for the game. I don't think you even... Were you amazed when you saw that? I mean, what was going through your head when you saw Daly put in a, a shooting performance that I don't think even you delivered? Well, I was I was very excited for him, to be honest, <laughs> yeah. because they did rattle off those numbers. The, what, three of 18, did you yeah. say? They said that on the broadcast, and Daly's not a bad shooter. Yep. So those numbers were not speaking to who he is. 
you know, obviously to go seven of 11, I, I don't know how often we'll see that. If we'll mm. see it again, it's actually a Melbourne r- record, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, pipping, P- pipping Chris Goulding, Golding. And Golding yeah. had previously hit six. So, no, it's great to see Delhi putting the ball through the basket because he's a great player at both ends. You know, defensively, he's a machine. He's been great all season. But he would be frustrated. And he's the type of guy that knows hard work will pay dividends eventually. It's exactly what he said afterwards. <laughs> oh, <did> he? <laughs> uh, I asked him, you know, how did you shoot that? Well, he said, because I've been putting in the work. Yeah, and that that isn't just a cliche thing to say. He would have backed it up. He would have been the last guy to leave training every single day because he puts so much pressure on himself to perform and he demands, you know, the best performances out of himself. So hard work, no shortcuts, and it resulted in a 33-point performance. He was just brilliant. Best player on the court by a mile at both ends, but that 7 of 11, I think at one stage it might have been 7 of 8 or 6. Yeah, Yeah, he was fantastic. And a big reason why, and a lot of people predicting that to be a grand final matchup, Illawarra v Melbourne, you know, Melbourne get away with the win off the back of a deadly performance. It was amazing. I think he had 21 points at halftime. Chris Golding had zero. <laughs> you don't see that <laughs> often at all. I can remember once, I think, in my career, I may have been leading Bryce Cotton a quarter yeah. time. <laughs> they might have ran two layup <laughs> plays for me. I had four, he had zero. So we take these while we can. <laughs> um, the other side of things, the Sydney Kings, um, they were they dominated most of that game on yeah. Sunday against the New Zealand Breakers. They were still up by 10 points with just over five minutes to go. Um, Xavier Cooks had just, just scored and... They had all the momentum. It looked like the breakers were ready to head back to Tasmania and, and regroup, but the game underwent a remarkable transformation. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it, especially from a team as shorthanded as the breakers mm-hmm. were. Will McDowell White wasn't available after hurting his back. They were still still, you know, pretty much down to a six man rotation. And they finished the game scoring eighteen of the last nineteen points and as good as they were, the capitulation from the Kings was just as stark. It's funny, I remember Sean Dennis, who was our assistant coach, is now coaching in Japan. You know, he used to talk about big moments within the game. So he used to think the last two minutes of every quarter were very important. Mm. Close it out well, gives you momentum going into the next. So he used to frustrate Sean that a lot of teams, and they still do it, will bench their best players for that last minute of the first, second, third quarter so they can start the next quarter. They used to frustrate him because he yep. thought momentum going into quarter time is huge. And another one he used to talk about was that, that mindset of 10 to 12 – point lead versus 10 to 8. You get a game back in a single digits, you always think you're a chance of winning. If you've been behind most of the game and you're coming into the last five minutes, if you're down 10 and then Sydney get one stop and go down and score, that 12 is a huge mindset difference than if they get it back to eight, which obviously they did, you know, they got an 18-1 run. And so I could just imagine someone like a Shawnee Dennis, you know, his voice was in my head when I was watching it. He'd be sitting there going, put your best five on there, run a play, which is, you know, you're confident you're either going to get to the free throw line or get an easy look. Uh, and let's really nail this game home by getting it to 12. Uh, and then there's little things like that in the course of a game, which I think go a long way. Instead of New Zealand get a bit of momentum, build some confidence, and a team that hasn't won, they're going to do whatever it takes to win every 50-50 possession. And they did that contest, which should have gone to Sydney. I thought New Zealand won, and a result in more possessions and more possessions mm. gives you more chances at the ring. And at this level, it gets hard to hard to stop. SD's going to reunite with Bevo as a, an assistant coach on that Boomers team next month yeah. in, in Japan too. it will be brilliant. Two of my favourite coaches of all time. And when you watch games, you know some of those voices do come back. And for me, it was SD's in my head. Uh, just thinking, oh, I could imagine that he'd be <laughs> exploding right now if he was on the sideline because they're the big moments. Is this a tough one for the Kings to get over? They've got a first-year coach, Chase Buford, who, you know, this Sydney team was had big things expected of. Does he start to feel the pressure and is this a tough one to get over? Look, I think the ownership group needs to go and talk to him and just saying, look, it's your team. We signed you for a multi-year deal. Let's make the, the decisions we need to make now because they're not out of the running. Now, yeah. if they keep dropping games like this, then obviously you're all but, all but closing the books of them making top four because of who they've got to you know knock out to try and get in that playoff position. So I'd be saying, look, here's all the confidence. We're backing you. You're our guy. But what do we need to do from a player's point of view? Mm-hmm. Is it waiting for guys to return from injury? Is there new imports we need to bring in? There was talk. I mean, obviously, they're going to bring in a new import yeah. uh, as an injury replacement. So there was talk of a, a point guard that's had two back, back, back-to-back mm. 10-day contracts in the NBA. His, his name escapes me, evades me right now. But yeah, let's let's make some changes. No, you don't have to be looking over your shoulder and let's see how far we can go. I was going to talk about that later, but let's talk about it now. RJ Hunter's gone down with a mm. season-ending knee injury, which was terribly bad luck for him, but... What does this Kings team need? Do they need a guard? Because they've got Jalen Adams, who's going to be their point guard. They've got DJ Vasilovic. They've got Angus Glover. Um, to me, now that Jordan Hunter's out for the season, Jerome Martin's undersized. I would, I'd be going big. 
Yeah. Martin, well, first of all, and we spoke about this with New Zealand, who is your stud? Who yeah. are we building around? And, you know, for me, it's Martin. I think mm-hmm. he is a star. Is he getting enough touches in the right positions? You know, that's for him to talk to his yeah. coach about where he prefers to get it. But he's just such a beast. He's so yeah. strong that I'd love to see them flattening out the defence. There's two ways to do that, of dribble penetration or rolling into the block. Let's roll it into the block so that you've got Martin with the ball in his hands on one block and you've got pin down set for DJ Vasilovic yep. on the other. And I know it's asking a lot of a guy that's only in his second year and oh. coming off a serious injury, but I'd be playing around those two guys because Angus Glover is a confident player. Yep. He's, a, he's, gonna, he's going to be a star. He will get his shots up. Yep. The he, other guys, he can create his own shot, can't he? he? Exactly, yep. he can create. The other guys, I'd be saying, we're playing around these two. We're going to bring in a third guy, another import. Yep. That will help facilitate getting these guys to being 15, 20-point players a game. But, yeah, they've got to bring in a scorer. I think they've got to bring in some size. Mm. They've got Xavier Cooks who can do a little bit of everything and I want to see Xavier out there for 30 minutes a game. So I'm not going to mess with with his chemistry with his teammates. They're my four... Who helps them? Angus Glover, DJ, Xavier and Martin. Yeah. Let's bring in another score, another big and, and play through those. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think they need necessarily another another playmaker because I think Jalen Adams is good enough now that he's back on the court to be that guy and who sets better. up his team match. Yeah. He will continue to get better. Uh, but yeah, they've got to make a move and bring in someone in quickly. Mm. Now, plenty of games. Let me run through the scores and you can tell me what stood out to you, Damo. So it started back back on, on Thursday night. This was a scrappy game, but the Illawarra Hawks got the job done, 97 to 89 over the Sydney Kings. Career best night from Sam Froling, 27 points, 10 rebounds. Then Melbourne United continued their winning run on Friday. Home game in front of one one people, as Alex Loudon will tell us later, <laughs> dead down in Tasmania. They beat the New Zealand Breakers, 89 to 78. Did you say one people or one person? One, one, one person. <laughs> one per- <laughs> um, then on Saturday, the Brisbane Bullets against a very rusty mm-hmm. South East Melbourne Phoenix, 100 to 84. Then... Delhi's game. I mean, it has to be known as Delhi's game. <laughs> Melbourne, <laughs> Melbourne United, 88 to 84 over the Hawks on Sunday. Then the Breakers, 82 75 over the Kings on Sunday. And last night, which might be where you want to start, Damo, on, on Tuesday night, the Adelaide 36ers, their first game in 31 days, a fast start, and they held on against the Perth Wildcats, 87 to 74. Look, what stands out is there's probably two games in there that was great team performances for the team that won. And then the other other games, individual performances, yeah. just amazing. You know, Sam Froling, 27 and 10, he was just absolutely brilliant mm-hmm. for the Illawarra Hawks. You know, Goulding, a cool. You know, that was more of a team performance against the Breakers because, to be honest, the Breakers were the better team were. for the majority of that. It Absolutely. took a team effort to get Melbourne back into it. Brisbane, we're finally, I think, seeing a little bit more, hopefully a little bit more consistency of those yeah. big three because... They've got three genuine superstars. Three they? of the top... I rate three of their players the top ten players yep. in the league. Yep. Uh, obviously in Sobe, Franks and Patterson. You know, it's great to see Drimmick doing his thing. He's always going to be that X factor. Mm. If they can get 10 to 14, 10 to 16 yep. out of him, I, I can't see them losing because those are the big three. But, you know, that Melbourne Illawarra game, mm. that was just fun to watch I mean yep. just two great teams known as the Delhi Vadova game as you stipulated <laughs> but they're two very good teams but Delhi was just the best on court by country mile and then we've already spoken about Sydney New Zealand that could come back to haunt Sydney if mm. they do want to you know make postseason play and then last night I know you said I'd start with it I will finish with it because yep. I didn't want to start in a bad mood uh, <laughs> Adelaide got the jump early does it still hurt seeing the Wildcats lose to Adelaide it does because I know what it means to the individual players that I'm still friends with yep. and it's, it is not a, a game that doesn't hurt when you lose. Mm. doesn't matter if it's your first game or coming up on Jesse's 400th, yeah. which you know we'll be celebrating it's in a very, fortnight's very time. Soon, very soon. Very soon, yeah. So it might be even their first home game. Home, it is, uh, first second, home game. Second yeah, home game. so I believe if all goes well, it'll be the Thursday, which is a bit of a shame. School's back. It's a yeah. Thursday night, but I hope that the arena sells it out. We'll Will you be on the microphone? That. No, I think I've got the first home game this Sunday. Does, so you're going to make him talk to Sean? <laughs> they, they were teammates for a long time as well but no yeah obviously didn't start well full credit to Adelaide like I said at the top of the show defensively I thought that brilliant team effort and then if you look at the numbers yes Besto was player of the game it was great to just see him doing his thing you forget that he played in the NBA there mm. for a while an Olympian but the numbers Mitch McCarron had we mm-hmm. we said this is more of a stat line yeah. with we believe he's capable of than what he's doing we wanted him to be more aggressive he yeah. came out and sh- he shot the ball and that set the tone for Pull him up to threes, then yeah. like, he was just fantastic so 10 points 12 rebounds 8 assists I think Adelaide are better when, when Mitch has that type of line opposed to 20 points but only 2 or 3 assists 2 yeah. or 3 rebounds when he's ever on the court you just know that he's in for a big night and I thought he was I actually thought he was their best player Mm. uh, even though Johnson had 21 and Bairstow a double double in 19 and 10 because Mitch gets everyone in the game so great to see Mitch McCarron back to his best 
Perhaps the highlight for me was seeing Sunday Detch back out on the court. Oh, yeah. He yeah. I, I, he came straight to Perth after he, he copped that cork in the last game with the Blitz. And he it was a big cork from, from Lou, the, the, mm-hmm. the Brisbane Bullets big fella. And he thought it was a cork at that point. He thought he was going to be miss one or two games at the absolute most. He ended up missing two months. And it was a hematoma similar to what Bryce Cotton. Bryce yeah. Cotton. He only narrowly just missed the surgery. It, it wasn't diagnosed as a hematoma until he got back to Adelaide. So yeah. that hindered his... his Recovery. He was then ready to go two weeks ago, and then this game kept getting postponed and postponed. He then was stuck in isolation for mm. f- for a week, and he only got out on Monday to, to then play this game on Tuesday. To but play your former team <laughs> against yeah. the best point guard or best shooting guard yeah. in the league. And your first game in two months, but how good was it to see him back out there? Just impact minutes. I mean... I don't know if Sunday is going to claim that he called bank on that <laughs> bank three where he got fouled. He turned and, into a four-point play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But just coaches must love him. You know, I know as a teammate, we loved having him as a teammate. He just does everything, every possession. Mm-hmm. Picks up full court, turns you, boxes out, rebounds, all those little things that are easy to do but easy not to do. He never not does them. <laughs> he always does them, yep. which goes a long way to being a good player. But he is a great player because then he backs it off with how he reads the game, mm-hmm. his unselfishness, his – you know, to take that much time off, it probably shows about who he is as a person with his approach to the game, mm. being able to stay in shape. Now, it is hard, yep. but I, I, you know, I've said a few Especially times. Especially when you're stuck in your house. You can't exactly, leave your house. Exactly. I've, I've said a few times, but in my opinion, Sobe, Price Cotton, Sunday Detch, three most disciplined players when it comes to their body and three fittest players yep. in the league. And we saw that by Sunday being able to back it up after mm-hmm. a long break and have an impact. So limited minutes you know, at the top of the broadcast. CJ Bruton said he's only going to have limited minutes. Mm-hmm. But I think they're just going to say, all right, mate, you look pretty good. <laughs> yeah. We're better with you on the court. Absolutely. Let's go gung-ho next game. Now, before we wrap up this segment, Damo, I think right now the takeaway I'm taking from the league is that Melbourne United is a cut above everybody else. To me, they look to be the team to beat right now. I know that the Wildcats have looked pretty good at times. The Hawks have. The Phoenix have had their moments. But to me, Melbourne, now on a six-game winning streak, Mm. um, they're doing it with, with one import. But their one import is doing a lot of great things, Caleb Bagata. He is so good. He is. And if, if Daly can continue to now be a scoring threat, we know what Golden can do. Luala Chul, not only is he a great scorer, but I think he's actually a great defender now too. Look, he was a best like defender of the year in his conference in college. Yeah. People don't realise he's We're actually, now saying why. Exactly right. Yeah. And so last year we probably only saw one side of the court being played, and I think that's why Vickerman dragged him a few mm-hmm. times. But he has flat out put his hand yeah, up this yeah. year as a contender for defensive player yeah. of the year. Uh, so it's great to see... And and, you know, Melbourne's just reaping the rewards of that. Yeah. I don't think they need to bring in another import. I, I, I think they've got the team. You've got yeah. the experience with Barlow and Newley when they need it. Shea Ely's a more than handy point guard. I think I think they're the team to beat right now. Yeah, no, I agree. Right now, this early in the season, that they are the best team. Six-game winning streak, I don't see that coming to a, a close anytime soon unless a team puts an incredible shooting performance mm. on because Melbourne do play both ends. Delhi's one of the best defenders in the league. We just talked about uh, Joel. There's just... Talent. You know, you look at all their players, actually. Illy off the bench. They've just got defenders across the page plus scorers to boot. Now, how have you gone with your homework, Damo, for your Damo votes? I like to keep people guessing. Don't just tune in. Go to our social <laughs> media page so you get my votes week in, week out. You look, there's obviously Della Vadova was huge. Jack White was huge. Um, Luala Kuehl, I got him, Joel, my bad. Luala no, Kuehl, that's all right. um was big time. That's three guys from one team who could all be deserving of votes. But obviously, I'm not going to do that to you. Mitchie McCarran was great again <laughs> last night. He was. Delaney, Cooks is always consistent defensive efforts. But yeah, I'll narrow those guys yeah, down we'll, in particular. We'll, I uh, think, and we'll wait to hear from the scoring machine on his player of the year votes as well. But we will announce our winner in the Galen in honor of Galen Young, the best team man for this week, Damo. Mm-hmm. Feel free to throw somebody else in. But my nominations would be Finn Delaney, Xavier Cooks, Caleb Bagada, Jack White, Cam Besto, Mitch McCarran. What do you think? Look, uh, oh, good nominations. And a lot of those guys genuinely enjoy seeing their teammates do well, which is a huge mm. part of this award. I'm going to give it to Agata. I, mm-hmm. I loved his body language out on the court. Mm. You know, he's been one of their best players game in, game out for the last three or four weeks. But he was almost played a backup role to Della Vadova. Yep. But every time Delhi made a shot, first person off the bench or first person giving a high five or celebrating, you know, you can't help but fall in love with a teammate who does that. And, and, and that's first, what we saw from Kayla. We've seen what a scorer he can be, but mm. he's a great rebounder. And some of those offensive rebounds, especially off the missed free throws yeah. late, were, were match winning. Huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. You would. <laughs> it's just a cardinal sin yeah. to give up, you know, offensive rebounds from free throws, let alone when the game is on the line. Big free throws missed. 
Illawarra could have got another look at it. Instead, they give up O boards. Agata was big time. So he's my selection for the award this week for the Galen. But yeah, some great names there. And we're starting to see some common themes. You know, Jack White, we've seen this a few times. Mm. You know, Xavier Cooks, we've seen a few times. Uh, and it doesn't surprise me to see Finn Mitch or Besto in there this week. Okay, Damo. When we come back, we'll hear from Alex Loughton. What are you looking forward to picking Lowes's brain about? Mate, just where we go. I'll ask him one question. We could end up anywhere with the answer. Just a great guy on and off the court, big sense of humour uh, and and high IQ when it comes to basketball. So he doesn't shy away from what his thoughts are. He won't sit on the fence. So let's see what he uh, does believe the MB- where the NBL is heading right now. And finally, a bit of basketball played. Okay, back on Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle and we're back for a second time with this with this man, Damo, and really looking forward to picking his brain again. He hasn't had a lot of action up in the far north that he can fill this up up with, but we'll pick his brain anyway. Alex Loudon, how do we find you up in up in the tropics right now? Mate, do, doing really well. Um, but a, a lot of people up here have not exactly had a good Christmas and New Year. Mm. Uh, and so they're coming back to work, coming back to their lives. And they're really not that refreshed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, unfortunately, it's been really, uh, COVID's been really sweeping through cans uh, these last sort of two to four weeks. Um, but, you know, it's running its course and, and people are prepared to kind of, uh, you know, get on with it, get on with life and, and get on with these games. And, and that's exciting and that keeps everyone upbeat that the games are finally back uh, for basketball. So, it's a great thing. Right, we're obviously recording this out of Perth. Our borders apparently open <laughs> in about three weeks' time. Give us a little heads up yeah. of what to expect when Omicron does come sweeping through the West. Mate, I, I, I think it's just gonna it's gonna come through. There's no kind of stopping it or holding it. It's, it's back. It, it's gonna do its thing. Um, I can only say that. Uh, look, my, my wife got it, uh, COVID, and oh. uh, she was out for sort of six and a half days of strong symptoms. But then it was another six and a half days of of mild uh, symptoms and just lingering kind of uh, tiredness and all that kind of thing. So it does knock you about a bit. She, she's double vaxxed. Um, I've had my, my third now, my booster, um, and I can only say that, that she felt good about doing that because it, it's made the symptoms not as bad as what they, they could have been. Uh, so she's just thankful that she was. Uh, but it does knock you about a bit, and, and it does, uh, doesn't seem to discriminate uh, anyone. So it's a uh, of a serious thing and um, yeah I, mean, I think it's just something we're all going to have to go through and I'd like to think that it's kind of peaked or is starting to peak in can and then after these next two or four weeks it's going to you know kind of subside a bit but for Perth obviously opening up February 5th if that's the case uh, I mean I would expect it to do it to do its thing and, and you guys have the ability of, of seeing what mistakes other towns have made and maybe be able to get on top of it but the only thing I can sort of say is that that booster one seems to be um, uh, the main difference. Had that third kind of shot, it seems to do the, do the trick. That's good news for us because I got mine last week, Lowes, and Damo's about to get his this afternoon. Oh, excellent. Very good. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> who, who would have thought that COVID talk is just the norm now on sports shows? But uh, <laughs> I dare say we're not the first. We won't be the last. Well, but- Lowes, <laughs> sorry, before we do move on, how did, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sorry to hear about Michelle, but how did you avoid catching it and how did the kids avoid catching it? Well, interestingly, we're pretty sure we got it from the New Year's Eve game, the mm. Titans versus the Wildcats. <laughs> now, a lot of the Wildcats got it, as yeah. you know. The Titans got it. The, the score bench got it. Oh, Matt Smith, hang on. Typical um, Titans well, fan blaming the Wildcats for bringing Omicron in. <laughs> oh, look, look where he's going with this. A oh, what a root boy <laughs> blaming his old hometown. <laughs> I'm not saying the Wildcats brought it. I'm saying they had it. Uh, the Titans had it. And, and, and interestingly, everyone on the score bench side and the baseline side near where the Wildcats were, that L shape, that seemed to be the side of the stadium that got it because my uh, uh, the, the company that I worked for, it was at the other end in the, in the corporate box sort of section and on the uh, other side of the, the diagonal opposite of the court. No one there seemed to got it from the game. So it's, uh, it's just an interesting one. That it seemed to be everyone that got it from there was on that side. And then if you went out in Cairns pretty much within New Year's Eve or onwards, you probably had a pretty high chance of getting it. So any, anyone um, that was on the eastern side of Cairns Convention <laughs> or a party goer has spent two weeks yeah. in, in ISO. <laughs> pretty much. And we've got a Queenslander, Pikey. So uh, Michelle was able to stay downstairs 
uh, in my, you know, like our little uh, apartment kind of thing downstairs. And then Queensland is like a you know your old two story mm. yep. um, old home. So then we're, so we're upstairs uh, the rest of the family. So. Um, yeah, I locked her up down there for uh, a good week or so and told her not to come out until she's feeling better. But uh, no, nah, we looked after her. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I was able to avoid it somehow. Um, maybe I'm not affectionate enough um, as, as a husband. Um, so we're just not sure. It's exposed a lot of husbands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that was, you've had your children now. You know, don't blame me. Blame yeah. Oh, that yeah, is classy. Yeah, well, I'm glad yeah. you and the kids managed to avoid and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, hoping Michelle's back to full recovery. But we have. We finally yeah. had some basketball played and more than one game yeah. in a round. So uh, we better move on to the hoop right. talk. Well, the last game you saw in person was that game that everyone seemed to get COVID from, Laos. But it was a... I know it's a couple of weeks ago now, but there was a lot to like from a Taipan's perspective. Obviously, we know that Scotty Machado and Moko Jerick weren't going to play, but then on on Oof. game day, Taj McCall went down with his knee injury, slipping at shoot-around, which I'd love to get your thoughts on as well. But there was a lot to like about that performance, even though it was a loss to, to the Wildcats. I thought it was a, a great uh, performance from the players uh, for the Tigers that stepped up. Uh, I thought the Wildcats were able to rally, you know, taking a big punch in the, in the face in that first quarter. Um, obviously, Cotton was able to get going in that second quarter for 19 points, mm. and that sort of steadied the ship, but they were able to close it out in the end. Um, you know, they were only, uh, missing Blanchfield, of course, but, um, uh, you know, they're, they're a great group they were able to, to rally. But I think for the Titan, you know, there's, the, the players are seeing opportunity, and I think that's the big thing. When players have ability and then there's opportunity, they get hungry, and then that lifts the level of uh, the energy levels, and then it's infectious, uh, you know, but she had to go down the shoot around. That that really frustrates me. How does a shoot around become now uh, oh, yeah. an issue? What what is happening there? Like how does he how does he slip? What was going on? You know, I, there's a lot of questions there, and it's frustrating yeah. because it should be as light as possible, and just getting your eye and getting some shots up. Everything should be cotton wool. Like you know, it it shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but unfortunately, it did. And I don't know. I haven't seen anything that he's back for this game. I'm assuming he would be a couple of weeks would sort of rectify a, a slip and yeah. things like that, I would hope. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, look, I thought the team played really well, like really well. Like, um, obviously, um, you know, with the numbers down, uh, they are able to, like, Bull Qual, I thought, had a fantastic mm-hmm. game, very active and, and just proving himself at each stage. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a great a great hit out and, and a close one in, in the end. Mate, you said they should be wrapped in cotton wool for shooter, and you clearly never played for Trevor Gleeson. I tell you what, after a loss, game day shooter around was like an extra workout, and so you'd uh, exactly. literally have to ice bath before you went home to prep for the game. But no, it's, uh, well, he did it was play for Aaron Fern. I can't imagine Fernie's mm. shoot arounds were that were that cruisy, were they, Laos? Certainly, shootouts were very, very uh, long and lengthy, mm. and it was more of a mind, a mental test than anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do well just listening and listening <laughs> going over stuff but he was very he was very thorough um but yeah they're all they're all a bit different <laughs> getting a little sidetracked actually speaking of getting sidetracked tell us about you've played for a lot of coaches you know at all levels state national college mbl who were the stand or is there a standout that if you were starting a club right now as gm you'd say all right let's go get this coach he was brilliant I think the biggest thing is that each each one of them um, brought something different to the table, had a different angle. Like if I look at Aaron Fern, it was discipline and consistency mm-hmm. to the detriment of maybe being a bit, you know, on, on the boring side of things. There's a garbage truck does its thing in my background. I sorry if that's good noise. Um, <laughs> I you know, you're my, comparing Fern to a garbage truck for a sec, but <laughs> no, you literally no, have yeah. one in the background. Gotcha. But he's, <laughs> yeah, but it's consistent. It comes in every Friday, every, uh, yeah. every, uh, where did we, Wednesday. Uh, I should know this better. Um, you know, my college coach um, really, really drove home on game day. He really boosted everyone's tyres and really mm-hmm. made everyone super confident. Um, but then during the week, he was an absolute ass, if I could say that. Yeah. Like, you know, just really ripping in and, and I guess, you know, really give, giving us the discipline side of things. Uh, but, you know, he had his faults as well. I think, I think you're not going to find this one coach that ticks all the boxes, but they've got to tick quite a few. And it's come down to three things for me. Um, and one is um, communication with the players. You've got to have good communication uh, and really get on song with your with your leaders on the court. Um, you've got to have you got to tick the discipline sort of box. You've got to have the players uh, in, in shape and really performing consistently well with discipline. And I forget what the third one. What was the third one? 
They, they've got to have the tactical they, they're side of things. So, <laughs> you can make it up. Hey? They're, they're your yeah, rules. Yeah. You can make up so, whatever you like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it was the tactical side. So are they ticking the box of, of um, going over those plays, last five seconds, last 10 seconds, you know, last two seconds sort of scenarios and things? Are they doing that consistently? Uh, and just having all those those things on the go to, uh, you know, really easily when the game's uh, coming down the line. So, look, Fernie, I, I think Fernie had the tactical side and he had the discipline side, but lacked a bit of the communication side. So he was sort of a two out of three mm-hmm. ticking those boxes. I think with Mike Kelly, I think he had the great communication box check. With, you know, he was, a, he was a very approachable coach. Um, I, I think he had, uh, with... You didn't have the tactical side, perhaps, because the players were a bit frustrated on, on, on that side of things. Um, so, so he sort of had a couple of boxes checked as well. I think with Ford, he, he seems to be he's evolving, uh, but he seems to be checking quite a few of them. The, the only thing I was concerned about was perhaps the tactical side coming into this season, but he seems to be checking that box uh, as well. So it's been it's been hard because the games haven't been on you know very, very often. Mm. But we, yeah, the Titans have played the least out of everyone. Yep. But from what we've seen, he's got the players energised. There's good communication there. Um, you know, everything seems to be looking pretty good. Um, obviously, that as the games roll along, we'll, we'll see more. But with those players down, everyone stepped up, and that's uh, you know can be attributed to the coach. Yeah, oh, well, I think from a player's perspective, when you're mentally switched on for every possession, you're physically fit and you're full of confidence, then you play your best basketball. And if you've got the right directions from the coach with a you know defensive game plan, offensive game plan, then you're looking pretty good. So yeah, I agree. Are those three things I'm going to steal for any speak engagement I do? I go use moving forward, and you better believe I'm not giving a Louton any credit. It'll be like I've come up with three that I think coaches need to tick. So I appreciate yeah. that, mate. Um, looking at the games that have played since you were there live on New Year's Eve. I mean, with the exception of Melbourne, uh, it looks like, you know, on any given night, you don't know who to, who's no, going to win. I agree. Uh, you know, whether it's jumping a team early like we saw last night, Adelaide versus Perth, or close games, yep. or coming from behind like Melbourne did against New Zealand. I thought New Zealand were going to sneak that one out. You know, United yep. are rolling, I think it's six in a row, yep. is it for them? But every other team, you know, it's good to see New Zealand notch up their first win, but who knows what's going to go on on any given night. I've got a, I've got a bit of a theory about Melbourne United, and I'm it's not going to be liked by many people, but I feel like it's the it's the like Melbourne Dad Army United. They've got a lot of old <laughs> older players, and you've got to be weary about these old KG players because they've got the experience and they, they've uh, fine tuned their efficiency down to a T, right? And you know what helps older players is copious <laughs> amounts of rest. <laughs> so they had two weeks off. Yes, they have two games back to back kind of thing. But I mean, you know, Dana, you can you can you know muscle out two games after two weeks off. Mm. So they've done the two games. I think whilst there are big breaks, the Melbourne Dad's Army United <laughs> will perform very well um, because the older players can, can rest up and it, it suits them perfectly. Mate. When the games start getting <laughs> when the games start getting more frequent and back to back and rolling on, you're gonna find those tired older players uh, are, are gonna struggle a bit more while the youthful Illawarra kind of team perhaps uh, might have an edge uh, over that kind of thing. And, you know, uh, Phoenix, I think, are, are in there too, but they, they've had a few stumbling blocks. Um, New Zealand, I just feel for them because I looked at, I had to look at this, the box score with the one person in attendance. I was like, <laughs> yes. is, is this right? And, uh, you know, there's uh, no home court advantages at all. It's just, uh, you know, a, a real trying time for them. Um, but you, you're right. Like, they, they've taken it to, um, they, they got their win on the board. They've got, you know, things rolling a little bit. Taipans are sort of in that middle. Once a few more games come into their belt, we'll see where the dust settles with how they're, they're playing. Uh, but yeah, it's really up in the air. I, I think it's exciting. I, I think that Adelaide played a great game last night um, just to um, atone that poor performance. Yeah. How many days ago was it? 31. Uh, for 31. Their 31. 31 <laughs> days of chewing on a loss to the Taipans and really laying an egg. Um, so that was, that was good to see the, the energy levels uh, yep. back and, the, you know, the friskiness in their step. So, yeah, it's exciting that the games are back on, really, and that, that you know, teams are really, really jostling for, for W. And we're seeing some bigs as a proud big man and one mm-hmm. of the best Australia's produced. You must be proud of guys like Yanni Wetzel, Finn Delaney, you know, obviously Cam Besto in the yeah. starting lineup for the first time last night with Adelaide. Even uh, both Ian. Froling brothers? Yeah, Froling's like, I feel like in weeks gone by, we're talking about the Vic Laws, the Bryce Cottons, mm-hmm. the point guards and the shooting guards, yeah. whereas it's the bigs at the moment, I think. Yeah, look, um, the you mentioned um, 
uh, Bairstow at Adelaide. I thought he was very uh, workmanlike last night. And just those tip ins, just all those extra plays. Uh, it, it was just very focused, you know. And it's good to see those uh, those local guys uh, step it up the gear and really, you know, not just you know, uh, let the, the big stars get all the headlines. So I think they've got a lot of uh, hunger in them. And with all these players sort of out and all injured, there's, there is opportunities there to really make your or stake your claim. Uh, on, on being a big name sort of uh, for your future contracts and things. So, look, it's such, it is such a hard league to predict. I, I do think those top four teams are kind of going to break away to that upper echelon. Um, I, I do think there's some sort of teams that are going to struggle to make make the grade. Uh, tight ends are kind of still in the middle there with that low number of games played. So it's hard to sort of think where things might settle, but obviously a quarter of the way through, um, you know, <laughs> Our game's going to be rescheduled in this FIBA window. It looks like it's mm. going to be the case, they Bucky. Uh, I actually think they might play through it, but that means that no NBL players, at least main sort of players playing minutes, will be available to, to go on that trip to Japan, which raises another point for me, Laos. Um, if Bevo gives you a call and needs some experience on that <laughs> on, the, on that trip to Japan, do you jump yep. on the plane? No, no, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> Louse is out of contention. Uh, I, I think I've got a calf. I think I've got a calf injury. So, uh, no, I mean, I'm in no shape or form. Uh, if you need someone to maybe drink some beers on there, I'm, I'm more than happy to provide the banter. But, yeah, no, this is uh, this is not, not my territory anymore. Helps, well, with, helps with the culture. You might be able to uh, get Yeah, the culture, yeah, yeah. So, driving the culture, that's the one. Well, <laughs> I'm hoping they do go young. And, and mm-hmm. Pike and I spoke about a few weeks ago. You know, we saw when Australia v New Zealand, it was, I think, Mick of Vakona played for New Zealand, and then the rest were kind of 18. Well, well, or it was <laughs> only New Zealanders that were in Australia at the time. That, yeah, that, that was the only ones exactly that could right. play. But I love the idea of seeing someone, you know, step up to the plate and show what they're capable of as an 18 or 19 year old again. And you look at some of the young talent we got out there, we're obviously not going to bring college kids back but Tyrese Proctor he's 17 I think it, similar to a Dyson Daniels going to be the, the next NBA star mm-hmm. and I'm saying I think they should take Bevo should take a young squad to Japan mm-hmm. let the rest of the world see them because in five or ten years time they're going to be household names and, and it starts with I think Tyrese Proctor I, I couldn't agree more like it's such a great opportunity um, and those trips are great like you, you learn so much and you kind of you, if it's your first sort of big tour away, you kind of loosen the shackles a bit. Once you see it for the first time, then maybe the next tour, you, you're a bit more prepared. So it's good to get that out of the way early. Um, but but it's exciting for those young players to be on those those tours rather than you know get someone that there's no you know the older players. There's not much point taking them in, in some in some regards. Like you, it's a free swing really, and you, why not do it with the young up and comers and let them prove themselves. Just like when the numbers are down in your own team, you know, and there's opportunity there, players jump at that. And, you know, yeah, they, it can excite them and bring out a new level of performance that they never knew was possible before. So I 100% agree that they give the young guys a crack and show, them, show us what you got. Hey, and you saw that in person last year when that ga- the game in Townsville against New Zealand, Lowes. You were, you were there to witness that when Adam Capon was the coach and, mm-hmm. you know, guys like, like Daniels were, were starring there. It's a... It's a great chance for these guys to, to get some experience. We've seen Matt Kenyon yeah. go on from playing in that game, being yep. captain, to now getting an NBL contract. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even for the coaches, like Kerry Williams was, yeah. was assisting yeah, with the Boomers there, and, and now he's a you know assistant coach at the NBL. Like it's, these, these are all little stepping stones that, that can be a uh, form a great sort of uh, fabric of, of what your or a mosaic of what your career looks like as a player or as a coach. Uh, great opportunity. Let me ask about one last question about the the young players Australia's got. Well, actually, I think he's a New Zealand citizen. Mm-hmm. Mojave King. Obviously, he was up with Cairns. Great junior. I think he calls himself Australian. He calls now. himself Australian. Yeah. I think he might be Jew. But great talent, but seems to have, you know, a quiet year in Cairns. Now he's in Adelaide. I think CJ's going to be a great coach for him. But, you know, at what point do you think, okay, maybe he should have gone to college or, you know, Dyson Daniels G League, or was the NBL the right decision? It's just that you realise that these guys are still kids playing against men. I, I, have, a, I have another theory. <laughs> 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 I have a theory. I don't, don't give you all my theories has, has, in one hit. Did the Americans walk on the moon? How many theories can we get into? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, it's a big numbers game right now, right? How high can you jump? How wide is your wing? Mm-hmm. How in all these numbers that they're, they're using is like gospel, and what they're missing out on with when you look at players, when you look at their numbers, you're missing out on something that just happens within the core of a player and his ability and his desire to want the ball and to make things happen and to prove himself with experience, um, how to get those wins. Now, yourself, Damo, 
uh, you know, I'll take you as, as an example. Let's say that you're not the most athletic guy around. Um, let's say that your, ap- your, hu- <laughs> your hustle and your heart absolutely made you head shoulders above uh, your, your nearest competitor in terms of a defensive kind of guy and, and a, a contribution to a team as a teammate. That made you like a, a, an outstanding player, uh, more so than your ability to jump high or do all those things that tick the boxes in terms of the numbers. Now, I think the athletes these days coming through they're looked at more for their, their those numbers um, of their you know their athleticism and their, what they can uh, how long their wingspan is more so than their ability to read a game or, or perhaps go off feel and I, I feel like with Mojave King he, he's a guy that needs to kind of chase in in terms of progression he needs to, to chase that that rabbit I guess if you're a greyhound you're chasing that rabbit. you need a, you need a target to chase he's not going to be self motivated um, and more autonomous he's going to be a guy that's going to have to um, be given uh, or taught how to be competitive and, and have that desire. Whereas other players, it happens from within. You, if you pair up the right coach with that kind of player, I think then you get a great result. If you're a coach that requires a player to be autonomous, I don't think he's going to. Um, I don't think he's going to succeed well in that environment. So I think DJ is probably a good fit um, for Mojave King. I, I don't think Mike Kelly was perhaps a good fit for Mojave King's progression. You know, it's just different. I think I think the players um, have to have, the, you know, the right kind of uh, coach, I guess, or the right environment for them to succeed. Uh, and, and, you, and I just worry about some of those those numbers when new athletes come through that they're not, they're all just sort of saying, oh, how high can he jump? You know, how big is his wingspan? Rather than they're missing those players that have that really good um, sort of gut check feel about a game. Um, so it's just a bit of a concern of mine, I guess, moving forward with these new athletes coming through. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember hearing Brett Brown speak years ago uh, when he was with the Boomers and he was saying that one of the first things they do look at is potential or not potentials in they're averaging 16 in college they might be able to go for 20 in the nba potentials in they've got a seven foot two wingspan they move well what can we coach and do we need to teach them this this and this because we can back and we teach the skill set but can we we can't teach size <laughs> we can't we yeah. can't make you all of a sudden seven foot yeah and, and yeah to an extent you're exactly right insofar as you know I would love to have seen him go to college and I don't know him personally. I don't know the decisions he made or the advice he was getting. So this is nothing personal, but if he goes to college, I think we see him on ESPN sports center highlights, you know, every few weeks because he's a highlight reel waiting to happen. Mm. If he's throwing the ball, thrown in the deep end and said, go and be a starting freshman, you know, on a, on a mid major or a major D one team. Whereas here, you, you just forget that they're men you're going up against. I used to love when, you know, we played against college teams who were huge college teams in America would come out to Australia and Maddie Knight ate them up because you've got a yeah. grown man who was never yeah. going to make the NBA yeah. six foot eight. Yeah. You know his hair made him six foot eight. Sorry, six foot six. His hair made him six foot eight, <laughs> but so skilled, so strong that all these guys that are now in the NBA, they came out to play against a Maddie Knight or a Sean Redditch, and you realise, okay, yeah. these are boys going against men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and maybe it was a better, a better option to be at a at that college level where he would get the opportunity because yeah, certainly in this this grown man's league, uh, I think I think King has sort of struggled um, but you know he's 18 and yeah. you know it might not be for all the players like it's not sort of a one size fits all no he's 18 I think he's going to be a star he's, he's one guy I can't wait to see doing some big things uh, you got anything else for Lousy I know we're taking up his time oh, he's got uh, I think, I think Lousy has to get back to work to yeah. be honest so be, before, uh, yeah. before we get you before we let you go Lousy um, the Taipans haven't played now since New Year's Eve but all of a sudden starting Sunday against New Zealand they play three games in a week what can we expect to see from them Look, uh, I think they'll be hungry like uh, all teams that have a bit of a break. You know, how much they've been affected by sort of COVID, we, we don't know. Uh, obviously, there's that lingering kind of, uh, you know, fatigue that might come in for, for certain players if they've had it hard. But I think it's, uh, I think they'll be rejuvenated uh, and hungry. Uh, so I expect the things, especially, you know, this Sunday game against the Breakers, uh, they'll, they'll like their chances against the Breakers for sure. Not to be underestimated, of course. Um, but look, I think they'll be looking to, you know, really make a mark these next three games. So I'm thinking at least, uh, I think at least one or two wins out of the three um, would, would be a feasible sort of a, a reality. Fantastic, Lowes. Loved your, loved your theories, loved your insights, loved catching up with you again. Thanks for, very much for joining us and we'll do it, do it again in a month's time. Let your wife upstairs. She's okay now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I think I can hear the boss calling. <laughs> <laughs> See you, mate. Thanks, Lowes. See you, guys.
Okay, back on Hoop Seven's basketball hustle. Big thank you to Alex Loudon. I'm not too sure about his demeaning of your athletic talents there, Damo. <laughs> you were a bit better athlete than he gave you credit for, weren't you? Oh, look, uh, I think I got four dunks in 13 <laughs> years, so I, I don't know if that's a huge stat, but all I know is it's it's four more than Greg High, and I like to rub yeah. that into him whenever <laughs> I can. Did you ever block Louse from behind? Did you ever get a chase down on him? Look, I've got a horrible memory, to be honest, but I would love to be able to find one and I'll be the first person <laughs> to send it to him after those comments. <laughs> now, let's race through round eight. We've got a full round to look forward to, Damo. I'll get a one-word answer with your tips for this this weekend. Starts Friday night, Brisbane Bullets and the Sydney Kings. Bullets. Saturday, doubleheader, Adelaide 36ers, Melbourne United. We've just raved about Melbourne, but I'm predicting an upset. Let's go with Adelaide. Looking forward to McCarran playing against his old team. Yep. Then second up, Illawarra Hawks, Perth Wildcats. Oh, you know I'm biased. I'm going with the Wildcats to bounce back after a loss. Sunday, Sydney Kings again with the Brisbane Bullets. I think Sydney will get this one. Uh, I can't see them go losing another one. First game in a long time for the Cairns Taipans at home to the New Zealand Breakers. Taipans. Last up on Sunday, the Jack Jumpers, their first game now. Let's hope it goes ahead. Their Wednesday mm. night game was cancelled. They're at home to the Phoenix. Uh, South East. Continue. Well, we've got a we've got a full round ra- <laughs> full full round of action again. Another another repeat. The Hawks and the Wildcats on Monday night. Uh, Hawk. A Tuesday again. The Phoenix and the Taipans. Yeah, I think Phoenix will get it done in Gippsland. I think that game is Wednesday night. Last one. We'll probably be back in time next week to talk about this one. Just about demo. The Brisbane Bullets and Melbourne United. I'm going to go with. Melbourne, because I can't see them going of two for a weekend, but trying to beat Brisbane in Brisbane. Look, the two matchups I'm most excited about, Illawarra, Illawarra v Perth and that game, Brisbane versus Melbourne. Some blockbusters coming up this round. No, thank you, Damo. I know you've got to run, but just <laughs> finally, please survive your camping trip next week. Cool, yeah, I hope I'm back. Uh, I'll be complaining about, one, not being able to set up my tent properly, two, not being a natural fisherman, and three, the heat. So let's see how we go. What am I thinking? Okay, thanks to Damien Martin for obviously joining us here on, well, it's his show, Hoop Seven's Basketball Hustle. But he, he's had to run off. Just some tidying up work to do before we wrap up this week's show, and I, and I hope you've enjoyed it. It was, it was great to catch up with Alex Loughton and, and to pick his brains to, to get his theories on a, a number of diff- different things. He's obviously based up in Cairns, but he's a, he's a Perth boy. He's played across, across the world. He's played for the Boomers. Um, he's got a lot of great insights, and and as we've said before, it's a great shame that I think he's not greater utilised in the NBL media landscape. I'd love to see him as part of the TV coverage for those Taipans home games at some point. I'd love to see him used in different roles. So let's hope we see a lot more of Alex Loudon. As you can probably hear as well, he'd make a natural as a coach as well. I don't know if he necessarily wants to go down that path, but if he wanted to go down the coaching track, he's absolutely got the basketball brain and more importantly, the ability to inspire and instill culture in a playing group, that was one of his great strengths as a player and a leader with the Cairns Taipans. And if he wanted to go down that path, he absolutely could. But um, no, he's very well settled into his life after basketball as well. And he's got his three three kids and, and his wife, Michelle, there in Cairns with him. So I hope you enjoyed catching up with, with Laos. I hope you enjoyed Damo's insights as well, as always. he's it's you know We have a bit of fun on the show, but it's great to hear from an all-time great like Damien Martin and to be able to, to get his thoughts on everything happening in the league. And he's a busy man, so we're, we're grateful for him to giving up some time each and every week here on the show. And, of course, thank you to Hoop7 for making this possible. Head to hoop7.com.au to do your online shopping. You'll find everything you could ever hope for in terms of basketball gear and, and plenty more. So all the shoes you need, any size you need, any brand you need, basketball shoes, casual shoes, Hoop Seven is your one stop shop, but it goes well and truly beyond that. All of the all of the merchandise, all of the clothing, all of the everything else you can hope for, head to hoop7.com.au or if you are local, head to the store, physical store in, in the Perth City on Murray Street, and you won't be disappointed. Just mention our show to Jason and his team there and and they'll look after you. But also, Tap Touch make this possible as well. And I don't know if you've had the chance to to listen to our breakout tap touch preview show that we endeavored to bring you each and every week obviously COVID has hindered that a little bit when we haven't had as many consistent matches to preview but I caught up with Matty Knight the three-time NBL champion earlier this week and we did a fascinating insight and he's an underrated basketball mind as well um 
I, I feel like Maddie doesn't get the credit he deserves for the insights and and the understanding of basketball that that he has. And yeah, we we, we spoke about a lot of things on that that show. You can go back through our archives and have a have a look at the Tap Touch preview. And we had a look back on all of the action that we had seen so far in round seven. We previewed the games that were to come, including the game that we saw more, most recently between the Adelaide Thirty Sixes and the Perth Wildcats. Unfortunately, the Wednesday night Tasmania New Zealand game. Didn't end up going ahead, but I, I do encourage you to go back and listen and hear Matty Knight's insights on the Tap Touch preview because I, I think he doesn't always get the credit that he deserves for the understanding of the basketball he he has. Obviously, he was a fantastic player. He was a dominant dominant big man in the NBL. He was a dominant big man at, at underage level when he was part of that famous Rob Beveridge coached Australian MU's gold medal winning team. Um, you know, he played quite a lot for the Boomers. He was a, a hell of a player, and now he's a, a hell of a basketball mind still. So go back and check out that from Matty Knight. But we ran through the games in round in round eight of the NBL quickly with Damian Martin. But let me just go in, in a bit more detail so you know what's to come this weekend. And the round begins, well, fingers, cro- fingers crossed anyway, that it goes, goes through as scheduled at this stage. But it starts Friday night, and this is a big game for both clubs. The Brisbane Bullets coming off a big win over the South East Melbourne Phoenix and the Sydney Kings coming off blowing that game against the New Zealand Breakers. So this is a fascinating game in Brisbane on Friday night. And according to Tap Touch, if you do want to try to, to jump on, head to taptouch.com.au. The Brisbane Bullets paying $1.79. The Sydney Kings, $2.02. So that, that'll be a great way to start the weekend. We then move into Saturday night, and we've got a doubleheader. And this game, I'm really looking forward to. Um... We talked about how Melbourne United are on fire, but the Adelaide 36ers look good coming out of their 31-day break on Tuesday night. They'll now back up, back at home at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre, playing host to Melbourne United. First chance for Mitch McCarron to play against Melbourne for Adelaide, coming off that championship last season. So that's another little added added incentive to tune into this game. Um, it's hard to argue that Melbourne's favourites going into this game, even in Adelaide, but... You know the the odds on Tap Touch aren't too bad if you're a if you're a fancier of the thirty sixes. The thirty six is three dollars twenty five. Melbourne United one dollar thirty four. I suggest it might be a bit closer than that. So looking forward to that game first up on Saturday, and then the second game on Saturday, the Illawarra Hawks hosting the Perth Wildcats in Wollongong. This will be interesting too. Both teams coming off a loss. The Hawks went down to Melbourne United on Sunday. The Wildcats lost in Adelaide on Tuesday. So this will be another fascinating game when they, they will back it up a couple of days later. So according to Tap Touch, the Hawks $1.72, the Wildcats $2.12, and I think that's probably probably fair enough. I think this will be a, a pretty pretty close matchup. So looking forward to that one. And now, finally, we're back to a triple header on Sunday. So really looking forward to, to these matches, including in Sydney, this time at Kudos Bank Arena, the Sydney Kings taking on the Brisbane Bullets in a rematch from their game in Brisbane on Friday night. And then, as we talked to Alex Loudon about earlier, the Cairns Taipans finally playing their first game of 2022. Their last game this season was back on New Year's Eve. We hope that Taju McCall will be right to return. We don't expect Scott Machado and Mirko Jerick back, though, unfortunately, for the Taipans. But they play host to the New Zealand Breakers, who are in pretty good form. They've won two of their last three. The game they lost, they played pretty well in against Melbourne. So they're playing some good basketball. And the Taipans coming out of a pretty big break. But they were playing well before that as well. So this will be a fascinating one for in the middle game on, on Sunday. And then finally, the Tasmania Jack Jumpers. Let's hope this game will go ahead. Their game against New Zealand on Wednesday wasn't able to, to proceed. But let's hope this one does. So this will be their first game since New Year's Day for the Jack Jumpers, and they're playing host to the South East Melbourne Phoenix, who will be very keen to put in a better showing than they showed last week against the Bullets. And they'll also be welcoming Brandon Ashley, their new import replacement of Devon Thomas. So he'll be making his debut for the Phoenix. So keep an eye out for him. Another another pretty exciting piece for that already talented South East Melbourne team. But round eight continues. It's a feast of basketball right now, which is the benefit of the games that we're postponed means that we've now got a got a basketball feast to look forward to. The round then continues on Monday night, and I think I might have misspoken earlier when we were with Damo and mentioned it was the Hawks and the Wildcats. It's actually the Hawks and the Adelaide 36ers playing in this one on Monday night in Wollongong, and both teams coming off 
games earlier in the weekend, which will be will be fascinating. So this will be another terrific game on Monday night. Then on Tuesday, um, the South East Melbourne Phoenix are hosting the Cairns Taipans in Gippsland in, in rural Victoria. So this will be an interesting one with both teams coming off game, a game just a couple of days earlier. And then finally, this will be fascinating too. The Brisbane Bullets at home to Melbourne United. The Bullets were in pretty good form last time we saw them. So before this game, they would have played the Kings twice. Melbourne coming off their trip to Adelaide. So we look forward to seeing what happens on that game as well. So that's a big round to look forward to. When we come back next week on Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle, when I'll be, be back with Damien Martin, the legend himself, we will see what's happened and give you an update on everything happening in the world of the NBL. We'll catch up with the scoring machine, Sean Redditch as well, which is always great to pick pick his pick his basketball mind and to find out everything going on in the in the world of Redditch basketball. So we look forward to that. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, this show wouldn't be possible without the support of Hoop Seven. So in turn, we need you to support them. So they so they continue to support us more than anything. So head to hoopseven.com.au or the store in the Perth city on Murray Street. For all your betting needs, head to, head to tabtouch at tabtouch.com.au. I'll be back next week, as I said, with Damien Martin. We'll be joined by the scoring machine, Sean Redditch, and we'll be bringing you more Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle.